Hey, Jeff from Become More Compelling here. Welcome to another episode of Compelling Convos. So let me ask you a question. Sometimes in conversation, do you feel boring? Do you feel like uh, you're just dragging the conversation down, like you don't have a lot to offer? Maybe you don't have a whole lot going on in your life so you can't talk about many things. If you've ever felt that way, or if you feel that way right now, this episode is for you. In this episode, we're gonna cover six ways that you can avoid being boring. Let's dive in. The nice thing is when you are more interesting and less boring, you have better conversations with people. When you have better conversations with people, you end up having better relationships. If you've ever needed a, a new job or if you've ever had your own business and you want to, to meet different people to network, the ripple effects here are really wide ranging. A big mistake that boring people make is that they are not interested in other people. So famously Dale Carnegie, uh, was at a party one time and he sat next to a botanist and he just asked his botanist questions all night learning more about botany and that botanist at the end of the night told the host like hey this dale guy is a pretty good conversationalist really dale didn't do anything he just sat there was interested in the other person and that helped him seem interesting to that person so the lesson here is the more interested you are in someone the more interesting you seem let's dive into one of my favorite ways to do that so i teach this to my private coaching clients and my students the concept of a dig question picture this you are at a party or you're on a uh, like a zoom hangout whatever it happens to be and you're able to ask some questions to go deeper into uh, who that person is what that person cares about and so that helps you go from kind of that surface level small talk to something a little bit deeper and it shows that you are interested in that person you're interested in the conversation that you're having so some examples of dig questions are tell me more about x why x what was that moment like for you when did you first realize x knowing what you know now would you still have done x so these are fantastic open questions when you ask a question like this a dig question you're gonna get back more than a one word response. And then you've got new stuff that you can grab onto and expand on, ask questions on, maybe you tell a story about it, whatever it is, you get more opportunities because you're asking questions that go deeper for that person. And it shows that you're interested. The only caveat I'll make is don't fall into the interrogation trap. And what that is, is when you uh, bombard someone with question after question after question, and it ends up feeling a lot like an interrogation and a lot less like a conversation. So the solution to that is make sure to tell your own stories, make some observations about what they've said. When you do that, you balance the questions and the observations and stories, and that really helps to make it feel a lot less like an interrogation. Boring people are typically bored. Have some interesting stuff going on in your life so that you can connect with a wide range of people on a wide range of topics. I call this the iceberg effect. It's when you have some interesting thing going on in your, in your life. It might be a hobby, it might be a class that you go to, it might be a meetup. It could just be a topic that you're really interested in. When you have those topics and those events and those things happening, then you can speak to them and you can speak to a wider variety of things. So if you spend all of your time uh, learning about Power Rangers, for example, you're not gonna be very um, set up for success when it comes to conversations that don't revolve around Power Rangers. So if you are super interested in one thing, you know, that's great that you have that. Expand that circle a little bit, read some articles, listen to some podcasts, watch some YouTube videos, branch out and diversify those interests. And especially if you can go to a meetup or a class where you can experience that new thing and see if you like it, then that is a really great way to get into something new and just see if you like it. I was on a call with a reader a few months ago and he, and he said something that I thought was really awesome. I'm gonna go once just to see if I like it. And having that mentality of like, I'll try it once just to see if it's a fit. That is really powerful because that immediately will start to expose you to different interests and different hobbies and stuff that you can eventually get really excited about and talk about. And so if you're able to bring up like, oh yeah, I was at this chess club. Oh yeah, I went bowling the other week. Like you have a lot of different stuff going on and that will always beat the person's like, yeah, I was just at home and I watched Netflix. I didn't do much. Like that is a night and day difference. That's a way to seem more interesting and less boring in conversation is when you can bring up those things that you're excited about 
that you, that you do on a regular or semi-regular basis. So my action step for you here is one to two times a month, branch out. Seek out something new. It might be a class, it might be a meetup, it might be like a virtual Zoom hangout, whatever it happens to be. Do it and see if you like it. Boring people play it safe. I typically notice that boring people tend to default to safety energy. Like they are, uh, you know, not wanting to make a big splash in the conversation. They're just kind of hanging back and they are putting on a, a lower energy version of themselves. Even, even though if you were hanging out with them in a different context, they might be way higher energy. So why do we do this? Well, I think part of it is like, hey, you know, I want to, I want to play it safe. I kind of want to check out the room and see what people are doing because I don't want to stand out too much. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're going to get a lot more upside by being a little bit more enthusiastic. This is what I call the plus 10% rule. So if you are going into a conversation or a social situation, could even be like a Zoom meeting that you're on, probably even more important in a virtual setting because you really have to be energetic. So go into that situation with 10% higher energy than the people there. This doesn't mean you have to be bouncing off the walls of Jim Carrey in the mask style, but having more energy definitely does you a lot of social favors because it triggers emotional contagion. When you're excited and enthusiastic about a story you're telling or uh, you know, a question that you're asking or you know, just being in that moment and being in that event, for example, people pick up on that and, it, and they will follow your lead. And so you actually become sort of a low key leader in that situation. So your action step here is be 10% higher energy than the group that you're joining or the like the event that you're at. You don't have to be bouncing off the walls, but just dial up that energy a little bit. Boring people either talk too much or talk too little. So they usually fall into one of these two camps. One is the kind of the domineering person who just will not let anyone else get a word in edgewise and they're just droning on about their train collection or whatever the hell it is. Like that is not good, but it's also not good to uh, not contribute at all and just be really quiet and, and doing, doing too much listening. Listening is great, but when you do it a lot and you're not contributing, then you know people leave that and they think, ah, you know, I didn't really, who is this person? Whether you talk too much or too little, both had the same root problem, an uneven, unbalanced conversation. Now, a conversation will never be a perfect 50-50, that's just not realistic, but ask yourself, how much do I talk in a conversation? So maybe you're, you talk 20% of the time, maybe you talk 80% of the time, whatever your number is, next time you're in a conversation, you know, it might be that Zoom meeting or you might be out in the world, try to balance it out. Try to get closer to that 50% marker so that it's a more even conversation, a more even back and forth. And conversation is a two-way street, so you can only control what you're bringing to the table. And sometimes that might be talking less, sometimes it might be talking more. You can't control what that other person, like how much they're bringing to the table. So I would, I would encourage you, like do it in your next conversation, do it in your next three conversations. And you know, have different people that you're talking to because different people, depending on the day, are gonna give you a little different vibe. In the comments below, here's a multiple choice question for you. Do you A, talk more than you listen in a conversation, or do you B, listen more than you talk in a conversation? Let me know in the comments below. Something else I've noticed, typically boring people aren't gonna have strong opinions on anything. They're just kinda go with the flow and, and kinda check the room and see what everyone's feeling. I'm here to tell you, it's okay to have strong opinions. When you have a viewpoint and speak about it passionately, that's a really interesting and compelling thing to do. And it's worth mentioning, yeah, it's okay to have a strong opinion. If you meet someone who doesn't agree with your opinion, no, that doesn't make them wrong. It just, uh, if you are empathetic with that person and realize everyone has different viewpoints, then you're gonna be a lot better off and a lot more socially adaptable, which is a huge skill as well. So if you have trouble forming those opinions and thinking like, okay, well, what even are my opinions? I don't have an opinion. Write down three core values that you have. So for example, my three are everyone can improve, habits are way more important than motivation. People think they're logical, but it's mainly emotion running the show. So when you have those core values written down, then as you're out in the world and you see, it might be a news article, it might be a story that you read, whatever it happens to be, you can say, well, 
okay, what's my view, viewpoint on this and how would I communicate it in a conversation? Again, not everyone's gonna agree with your opinion. Doesn't make them wrong. When you are empathetic to other people's opinions, that's actually a really persuasive thing because if you try to like say, no, you're wrong, well, you're not convincing anyone of anything. But if you're empathetic, like, oh yeah, you know what? I can really see how, how you might think that. You know, that happens to differ from my opinion and that's fine. Like that is a really strong position to play from. Boring people can sometimes fall into the Debbie Downer trap. If you consistently roll into a conversation and you are dragging the mood down, then look, real talk, people aren't gonna seek you out as much as you might hope. Look, life's hard. Sometimes life gives us a elbow to the face and that happens. Just don't lead with negativity. So my advice here is look for the positive in situations. Um, there is a really good episode of Compelling Convos uh, really good. I think it's good. I made it. It is episode number one, viewing events positively. And that's a way for you to kind of rewrite your operating system internally to look at the same event and look at it from two different lenses. One is a positive lens and one is a negative lens. So if you are a chronically negative person, you can start to rewire that to be positive. Uh, another great way to do this is journaling. So if you write down like what I'm grateful for at the end of the day, like that is rewiring uh, what you're thinking about and and that will rewire you to be a more positive person And so you won't lead with negativity nearly as much All right summary use dig questions to go deeper with people try one to two new things a month and try to make them as social as you can Dial up your energy by 10% make sure to balance your conversations if you talk too much or talk too little Try to even that out a little bit have an opinion but be empathetic to other people who have different opinions and lead with positivity. So that's our episode for today. If you have a topic suggestion that you wanna get me for a future episode of Compelling Convos, couple ways you can do that. You can at me on Instagram or Twitter at the Jeff Callahan. You can send me an email at jeff at becomemorecompelling.com or you can drop a comment below and then I'll cover what you want on a future episode of Compelling Convos. Talk soon. Hey, a couple of quick things before you leave. One, I've got a subscribe button over here. If you like this video and you don't wanna miss out on a future video, hit that subscribe button. Two, if you uh, like this video, hit the like button. That helps other awesome people like you find it. And three, leave a comment if you have any feedback for me or if you have a topic or suggestion that you want me to cover in a future video. Thanks.